Hello, thanks for tuning in. This is Dakota with Live Rope. Today I want to talk about a couple of simple ways to hook in uh, to your system on a rappel. The first method I want to show you today to hook in on a rappel is the most traditional way. It's by clipping into directly to your harness. So I have an alpine uh, harness here so this particular harness does not have a belay loop. You can also hook into your belay loop if you have a harness with a belay loop. So I clip in here. Always remember to use a locking carabiner. So here I have it. We've, um, I'm also anchored, I'm also hooked in with a personal anchor system to our anchor above and uh, this is always a, a great safety precaution. If you have a lot of exposure below you, you definitely want to mitigate that exposure to make sure if you fumble you won't fall. Today we've got a uh, rope through here and this is probably the most traditional way that you'll see in rep a rappelling setup as well where you either have two ropes or one rope um, length in half where you'll drop both ends of the rope uh, down to the bottom. That way it makes it nice and easy so you can pull one end when you get to the bottom and your rope will be free easily. So I pull both of these strands through my my rappelling device which in this case is an ATC made by Black Diamond. Other uh, there are several other options available as well. So I'll clip into this and I'm in. I also want to talk about um, safeties. So one easy way to create a safety is to have somebody below you administer what's called a fireman's belay where they have both strands of the rope and if you fumble then they can pull both strands straight down or pull them down and spread them out and that will actually lock your device up and arrest a fall. Um, and that's nice when you have that. It's, it's quick and easy to do and it can build um, team trust. In the case you don't have that, if you don't have somebody below you, say you're canyoneering and your whole group is above you and you're the first on a descent, your rope may be tangled on a ledge or on a tree or something below you that you can't see and it's always good to have some sort of backup. The first backup I'll show today is called an auto block. So with an auto block, With an auto block, I'm going to take a carabiner, preferably a locking carabiner. I'm going to clip it to my leg loop. And then I'm going to take both strands of rope on my brake hand side. And I'm going to um, loop a, uh, what, what could be a cordelette, a loop around it several times. Um, this particular piece is called a hollow block by Sterling and it's, it's made for it. You can also use um, five mil or six mil cordelette. And I simply loop this around my two lines um, several times. You want to practice this to know how many loops you need um, for the friction hitch to actually grab and arrest a fall. And then I clip both ends of that through my carabiner and as you can see here it's in. I'll give you a little demonstration of how this works. I'm going to choke up on the rope here a little bit and what I'll do is you can see now I've taken my my personal anchor off of the anchor there and my auto block actually has been holding me and it's easy under tension here when it's on the bottom to release and I can repel I do want to comment there is a drawback to this method and that is if, if you're going down on your rappel, you're rappelling, 
um, this auto block cordelette has a a chance of getting locked up in your in your repelling device because there's really no you haven't given yourself any space there so it can actually get locked up and you can run into challenges that way I'll show you a really quick fix to that the second method I want to show you to tie in on a repel is simply an extension it's just a, ver a variation on the first method I showed you so I've actually taken in this case my repel device from my harness directly and placed it on my personal anchor system which is about 12 inches out and what that does is I still have my auto block set up on my leg loop and that gives me about 10 inches of space between the two so this does not have any risk of getting caught up in my belay device. One last note is if you have long hair Please be careful if you have long hair, maybe uh, tie your hair back or use a ponytail or some other uh, uh, elastic uh, band to hold your hair back because hair and uh, repel devices do not get along. The last method I'd like to show you to tie in on a, rep a repel is <clears throat> with an extension, my ATC, and what's called a VT Prusik or a Val de Tan Tress. Um, one thing I'd like to note is most auto blocking systems or techniques are below the um, belay device, okay? And that's highly recommended for most friction knots, okay? Um, the one exception to that is a VT Prusik where a VT Prusik can be released under tension. So in this case, if I, if I let go, my, my VT Prusik has caught my weight and after I grab that uh, brake hand side again I'm quite it's quite easy for me to release the tension on that and so I can continue my repel continue my descent please note um, you can repel on the side of your dominant hand so I'm, I'm right-handed and I, I generally repel um, with my lines out to the right however um, a common way these days now is to hold both strands or the um, your line in between your legs and this is a really nice way to stay centered and and to not be pulled um, in either direction kind of out out of balance thanks for tuning in that's a wrap see you next time